who was 85 years old. <laughs> Sarah wants you to produce a baby. She said, man, I would have that up many, many years ago. Ain't nothing I can do. She said, you go and see your handmaiden. Hey, God. Okay? And here is uh, Abraham, 100 years old. Now, they didn't have no Viagra back then. Okay? And impregnates Hagar. I don't know how, but that's what the story goes. And out comes Ishmael. You know, the Muslims love their Ishmael. You know, they put their mouth and twist it all up. <laughs> you know, so, so they tell these people who embrace the religion all kinds of stories. And they believe it because they don't know who they are as a human being, what was given to them at the time of their birth. They don't know that. So they can't think. You see that? And you, look, look, you remember uh, Heaven's Gate? Oh, yeah. That old group oh, yeah. was led by old, constipated looking white men. <laughs> This white man told these fools, I have to call him fool. And I'm going to tell you why I'm calling him fool. He told the men of his congregation to cut off their penis. Now you got to be a fool to do that. Huh? You definitely can't think. Somebody going to tell you, go out the head and tell all the men in, 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 in this congregation, cut off their penis. That's, that's all we got. <laughs> Trying to hang on with that. You know. And these fools, listen to this fool, tell them there was a blimp up in the sky. Don't come and get them and take them to heaven to be with God. And you, you can't think. Something's wrong with you. I'm not going to cut off my penis for nobody. God said, where's Walter Williams? He said he wasn't cutting off his penis, so he don't want to be with you. <laughs> Something's wrong with it. You can't think. And then, I know a, a minister in Chicago. It's another true story. It's true. It's on television. Um, he told his congregation, he says, listen, I want you all next Thursday at midnight, I want you to be in my church. We all are going to ascend to heaven to be with God. This is true. He told his people to go and sell all their belongings, their property, go down to the public aid office and tell the worker that the curse should work out, in fact. <laughs> Tell her, work you don't need, I don't need your assistance anymore. And keep your food stamps, because I'm going to heaven to be with God. Then go and tell your employer that you don't need his employment no more. Because where you're going, go be milking honey. <laughs> Do you know these fools went there and did that? It's sad, I'm telling you. Can't these religions make you and put you in a position where you can't think? And they did all this and went to church like Brother uh, told them to do. And they sit there at midnight. No one ascended to heaven. <laughs> one o'clock came. 
They're sitting there looking at each other like fools. <laughs> nothing happened. Two o'clock came. Still nothing happened. And that's the true story. Isn't that sad? That's sad. sad. And, 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 and so you have to really understand these side effects. Now the third side effect is animation. What do I mean by animation? During Easter time, old Reverend Chicken Wing gets up there and he tells you <laughs> that Jesus was crucified on the cross and Jesus was buried and Mary Magdalene came to the tomb of Jesus and rolled back the stone and Jesus was not there. <laughs> and You can see Jesus being crucified, nailed to that cross. You're doing that with your own mind. And when you do that animation with your mind, you know where it goes? Straight into your subconscious mind. And from your subconscious mind, it superimposes on you in your life to be real. You see that? That's very dangerous. You see? Now, anybody seen The Passion of Christ? I thought that was a football game going on or something. All the people in the church, I mean, in the, in the show, lined up. And every time they would beat this uh, Jesus figure in this movie, the people in the audience start crying. <laughs> beating Jesus. <laughs> Taking every ball. Beating on Jesus. They didn't know that Mel Gibson had spent and paid five hundred me a five hundred thousand dollars for someone to create a animated Christ that by what you call it bionic man that's what it was a bionic man that he had paid five hundred thousand dollars to create to put up on that cross for the Matrix movement and every time that someone hit hit that bionic man he moved. He better move for five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> you know, and they be oh my Jesus. So forth. So here you are, animating all of this in your life. You see? That's the third side of effect. The fourth side of effect, you know what it is? Fear. They tell you if you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to die and your soul is going to burn in hell. Is that right? And you get scared, say, oh my goodness, I better believe in Jesus. They scare you into that. They tell you, I, I'd rather believe in Jesus so when I get to heaven, I'll be saved. If I don't believe in Jesus and get to heaven, then I won't. I will perish. And all that kind of foolishness, fear, People, the directions to read Revelation. All that fear literature is there. Just to scare the hell out of you. <laughs> See? So we have to know what has happened to us as a people. We have to divest ourselves from all religions. Because when you go to a church, you know where you're going back to? You're going back to the slave plantation. Oh, that's true, isn't it? Can I get a witness? All true. And we're caught up in it. I mean, you get on the, on the slave plantation. You come in there, you sit in the pews, you don't have to think. And the overseer, you know, during the slavery, Omasa was the boss. 
and the home of the plantation. Is that correct? He had an overseer by the name of Boss Charlie, old even white man. And uh, Boss Charlie kept order among the slaves. 